Welcome back. It's time for Up the Press. And just before we proceed, just to give you an update on one of the top trending we took earlier, uh, the Nigerian army has denied involvement in any attack or destruction of shops, including drinking joints and restaurants in Ehimembano, Imo State. I just thought I should put that out there. All right. Mr. Jude Johnson, Senior Lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism, Lagos State, has joined us this morning for Off the Press. He is, however, joining us from Kwara State. Good morning to you, Mr. Johnson. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. Good morning to our viewers all over the world. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure to have you. Let's start with the Punch newspaper. It leads with FG may pay $1.6 8 trillion naira fuel subsidy market has forecast 900 naira a liter. I'll give you the riders there before we proceed. Petrol price to rise again as naira nears 1,000 naira. Crude oil heats $95. Ipman wants. Operators commend government for subsidy proposal. CSOs oppose fresh subsidy. This is the hard thing right now in the country. Nigerians cannot afford a further increase in the pump price of fuel. Mr. Johnson, let, let's talk about this. Well, um, you could see that from, from the knee jack um, policy statement by the president, um, you will know that there was not a follow up um, thought through with respect to that, that pronouncement during his inaugural speech. Because you could see the reverberating effect of two major policy statements he uttered in his inaugural speech. One, the removal of fresh subsidy, and two, the unified exchange 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 rate. And you could see that more or less like it's yes, there's the need for a policy somersault. And for those of us that raised the flag then when the president um, made that statement. And for those that were boxing in the euphoria of their victory in that election, uh, talking about, well, is the president, there's a need for it, for that decision to be taken at that time. And I'm sure all of us have come to the reality of time that in making policy statements, in coming up with policies that is critical to your economy, it must be a policy that is thought through. All the options must be weighed. And then the intended consequences and unintended consequences must be factored in before making those pronouncements, other than making those pronouncements for a few good factor. It's evidently clear that the president had no data to back him up in making those statements. And when he made those statements, which we are almost going back in reverse order, I think it's about 360 de uh, 180 degrees reverse, because the president said there's no more forest subsidy, and at the same time, there's going to be 1.68 trillion dollar subsidy where's the money going to come from which from which budgetary allocation um, is that money going to come from um and then how do you justify the money that have been used on palliative if you are even going to to, to reintroduce for subsidy and if you are also looking at the exchange rate of the naira to the dollar which is almost close to a thousand naira which many people have thought is unbelievable or phantom people you begin to want A bit of network glitch there. Yeah. Hello, can you? Yes, we had a bit of can glitch. We, yeah, we can hear you now. Uh, so you'll be wondering who are those advising our chief executive in their decision in their decision making. As far as I'm concerned, this will be a, a policy somersault. This will be an indication of the president thinking through and not making political statement or trying to have a feedback factor in making pronouncement when it, co when it comes to public policy and uh, policies that has direct implication on the economy and the well-being of Nigerians. OK. Well, you, you are aware of um, the surprise, surprise uh, that we are being faced with, the fact that subsidy may have indeed returned. Yeah, you see, you, see, you see, it's just the lack of transparency and sincerity on the part of government. You recall when we discussed this issue earlier in the, in the early days of this administration, that what the president needed was for the president to put in place his cabinet 
and for him to tell them about the policy trust of his administration, and for the cabinet and those that are in charge of the economy, particularly his kitchen cabinet, for them to look through these ideas and look at what would be the best option. Should we remove subsidy now or should we remove subsidy later? Should we put in place measures that will address local consumption of fuel? Or should we put in place something that will increase the economic capacity of Nigeria, that will increase the production capacity, that will increase the gross domestic product, that will improve our economy so that we can match our export with our import? And then the value of the Naira can grow correspondingly with that of foreign, foreign currency, with that of dollar in actual sense. And then we begin to talk about unified exchange rate, other than that knee-jack policy that the president took. And we said that this is the time for, for us to put government on its toes, because for the, for the past eight years under Buhari's administration, everybody was patronizing every policy of Buhari's administration without putting it under too much scrutiny. And we, this is where we have found ourselves. But now, every one of us must be the watchdog. Every one of us must hold the government accountable to ensure that due diligence is done when it comes to coming about coming out with public policy, other than making um, um, political statement, uh, other than thinking that we are still in the election season, not knowing that election has ended, it is now time for governance, and in governance, governance of us. Okay, um, moving forward, I, I'll read out some of the other headlines here. Above the masthead, you have academic record. Delay Atiku's request, Tinubu tells U.S. court. Uh, legal team seeks review of ruling. Ex-VP's aid alleges cover-up. Then you have, going down, you have, um, I remain loyal, forgive me, Shuaibu begs Obaseke. Details of that you can find on page 12 of the Punch newspaper. Cold clashes relocate to Shagamu. Abiodu tells security heads. Pages 4 and 5 is where you'll find that. And then consumers allege sabotage as greed collapses, worsen out age. All right, so you have the picture there, uh, a picture right in front of the Punch newspaper. That's a picture of the candlelight procession that took place yesterday in honor of the late Mobad. You have pathologists conclude autopsy on Mobad's cops. Please await result. Uh, you see the pictures there? Um, the youth calling for justice for the slain, well, the late Mobad. He wasn't slain, but there are stories that he may have been murdered, that he may have been uh, killed. So we don't know the full gist yet until the report of uh, the, 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 you know, comes out. The report of the autopsy is uh, revealed by the police. Let's start with that, Mr. Johnson. Well, for me, my take home from all of this drama is just very simple. In the sense that um, the way security agencies respond to petitions of ordinary citizens compared to the way they respond to petitions of highly placed individuals. Um, this is just one of the many examples of people that have written to the police with respect to trying to get justice or to, pre to prevent themselves from being abused or from being, from being exploited by, by, by those that are more powerful than them in the society. That's my own take home from, from all of this. This is just one of the many examples. There are 1,001 examples of um, uh, the case of Mobad that have been that have not been attended to by security agencies across the length and breadth of this country. You have to take public outcry and public intervention for the police to respond and for the police and other state agencies to do what they are supposed to do under normal circumstances. That's my own take concerning that. I think that uh, what the public have just done with this case is to highlight some of the challenges we have when it comes to seeking justice and getting redress from, from agencies of government that are meant to protect the citizen from, from one form of abuse. Indeed. Uh, well, I, when I heard the story, I didn't know the young man before he died. But then when he died, he, his story was all over the place. I began to read. And, and then I began to ask myself, how many people failed him? The man sought for help. The man cried out. He was being bullied from the things we've heard. He went to the police. He wrote 
you know, seeking for, for help. And his family, everybody, I, what happened? Why did it seem as if this man was left to himself? And then after his death, there is this cry for justice. Could he have been helped by people in the industry? Could he have been helped by the police? Could he have been helped by his family? You know, these were questions no, that we began been, to come to mind. We have been bullied on daily basis. Each, each and every one of us, you and I, when we drive on the road, when we are going to our respective offices, we see people that we have elected into public office. They bully us on the road. Oh, yes. With their siren, with their security agencies. So it's just a reflection of what happened in the larger society. Is we have security agencies when they are going about their normal business. On my way, driving down to, 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 to Kuala State, I was, I was bullied by the security agencies that were, that were put on the road to provide security for me, asking me irrelevant, irrelevant questions, showing, uh, uh, look, it's, 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 just, it's, just, it's just unbelievable. It's, that's just the reality of what we have found, we have found ourselves. We are being bullied by people who have elected into public office to construct the roads. They left the road on they left the road unconstructed. We are being bullied by people that were elected into public office to build the hospitals. All you need to do is to take a visit to general hospitals or, or public hospitals and see the way staff that have been employed in those offices bullied and abused patients that are coming there. So yeah. bullying and abuse is, is, is a way of life. This is just a reflection. This, if you throw the camera, to the number of abuses and the number of abuses an average Nigerian goes to try to seek services from government agencies, government agencies that are put in place to help them, you'll be shocked that are we do we really have a country? Are we really a people? Well, too late now. Mobad is dead. I wish all of these cries coming out would bring him back to life so that you know he can get justice. But then, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let, let's millions hope that lessons have been learned. Let, let's, let, let's hope yeah. that lessons yeah. have been yeah. learned. There are, millions, there are millions of Mubad out there. Mm. All right, so um, the case in Shagamu, the court clashes, well, the, is a major the, one. The case in Shagamu, if you recall during the last, during the 2022 20, gubernatorial election, um, you knew Shagam was an hotbed of, of, of election violence. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the pictures of what we saw in Shagam were uh, around Shagam. When I talk about Shagam, I'm talking Shagam, Iperu, um, Elishon. I'm talking about I'm talking about all those Remo 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 acts where unfortunately uh, the governor is from, uh, and then um, the senator is from. The senator representing Obo East is from, and then the candidate that came second in the in the in the gubernatorial election in Obo State is also from that from that from that from that axis. And if you are familiar with with, with Shagam, crisis in Shagam, if you recall in the 90s, in the early 2000s, when there is crisis in Shagam, usually leads to loss of life and property. And the question you ask is, what have the security agencies been doing? In our chart to get intelligence with respect to before this thing led to loss of lives and property. Uh, and, and how did, does the governor justify the security vote he, he, he spends on the daily basis and monthly basis? And how do we justify all the security agencies in this local government? The DSS for that local government, uh, the the DPO, the area commander. You know, we have all we have all agencies of government in place that, that are meant to forestall occurrences of this 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 act but this is the failure of the system it's a systemic it's a systemic it's a systemic failure on the part of those who have given responsibility and, and why is that place so volatile why is it so volatile well, it's to look when when you have this type of clashes it's very clear it is very, very clear that if there are no political undertone, that's my opinion. I might be wrong. Hmm. If there are no political undertone, uh, this thing won't rate of the head as as it is now. But we must face the reality. The reality of the time is very very simple. Uh, uh, the reality of our time is very very simple. We have seen the movement of the secret court away from the university campuses like we had in the early 2000s. We have seen that moving to the streets. And not on campuses again. All you need to do is for you to go to the street 
and listen to the voice of the street. It's not peculiar to Shagam. The, the advent of democracy has brought about some menace into our society with respect of recruitment of, 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 of talks for electoral, for electoral, for electoral purposes and the sustainers of, of those of those of those criminal elements in maintaining hold over political power. All you need to do is to snatch it, grab it, and run with it. And run with it. Okay, let's go forward to this. The one of the topics on the above the master, you have academic record delay articles request. Inubu tells U.S. court. Well, um, it's just a matter of time. We come to the reality of what that is all about. But I think that um, if there should be an outcry about Miss Summer for 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 forging a jam resolve, and there was a national outcry, and there was a press 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 conference by jam registrar. Um, and if Salisu Yusuf and others have been held accountable and culpable, would accountable rather when they were found culpable of one forgery or the other, I think we should wait for that uh, for, for for the court pronouncement to know whether um, the president is culpable or is not culpable. For me, I keep my fingers crossed. Um, it took the it took foreign courts for us to for. For uh, Ikrim Adu to be prosecuted, it took foreign courts for James Ibori to be prosecuted. It took foreign courts for Alamasia to be prosecuted, and so uh, we have seen that the, the the strength of our judicial system, which is critical um, to, to, to 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 democratic society, to to democratic governance, is is questionable. If even if you look at the judgments that have been given with respect to um, certification of of candidates that have contested election, whereby the burden of proof is left not on the person that is alleged to have fought his or a certificate by various pronouncement of the court, is left with the petitioner. We have a long way to go. But I think that anybody that is coming into, either goes to equity must come with clean hands. For example, if you want my records, all you need to do, all my academic work, all you need to do is to go to University of Lagos. You go to University of Lagos, you go to Babcock University, you get all my academic records, or you go online, you find all my academic records on, on public on, on the public domain. And I think anyone that wants to lead us in this country must be open with his academic record with respect to that. And the the the, the, the constitution does not require you to come with a um, with a um, with a degree, it requires you to come with a first school living certificate or school cert. So if you have that, present that, whatever you have, you present that to the public domain, and then we'll not be, we'll not be subjecting ourselves to this global scrutiny, and which invariably could, could subject our nation to international ridicule, or could subject our nation to a, 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 a international, international spotlight. That's, that's my take on that. I think that what the president needs to do is just to release his it's academic record. There's just, no need for this. Get it out. That's what so, some over. people are saying. Obviously, yes. the former yes. vice yes. president. Yes. Obviously, the former vice president is digging for something. The court has eventually said the school should let this um, make these materials available, and so. But the president has gone to court also to ask for that request to be delayed, and, and people are for saying example, Nigerians example, are saying. Go on. For example, if he's a nominee, if he's a, if he's a nominee. For a federal appointment that has this quote unquote questionable um, a mark on, on his or her resume with respect to certification, do you think such person will have been confirmed, will have been given the appointment? I think he who goes that to goes to equity should go to go with clean hand. And I think that the moment you have offered yourself for public service, everything that belongs to you must belong, must come to the public domain. Yeah. It has got to leave you the responsibility of of managing our resources, of managing our nation, we should be able to know how you have managed your life up to the point that we 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 we, we want to elect you. That's my take. That's yeah. my take. There's no need for hide and seek on this particular matter. It's very very simple. You see, when I work in an academic institution, if a candidate should apply for for for, for admission and we have question on that candidate's on that candidate certification, they will not get the admission. Not to even talk about coming into the public domain to be a governor or a president or to be to be to be a minister or to be to be look a lot of things have been put to question we have a situation whereby someone that is serving is still a minister we have a situation whereby someone that is an alleged to have presented 
a vote certificate is 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 is. is is, 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 is an elected governor. We have a situation whereby someone that has been someone that has been accused of electoral malpractices in, 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 the, in the past has been declared as governor elect. So by the court, so there is a lot for us to look at with respect to judicial reform. There is a need for us to strengthen for us to strengthen the institution of democracy. And one of the critical institutions of democracy is the judiciary. Another critical institution is the electoral body. Is there the need for us to to, to, to break INEC into different agencies, agencies that will screen candidates, that has the power to screen, verify the, 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 the credentials of candidates, and has the power to disqualify candidates before INEC presents such candidates for election. I think these are the conversations we should be looking forward to, and these are the issues we should be tabling before the tent, before the tent assembly. Because whoever wants to rule this nation, mm. whoever wants to come into the public domain, must be somebody without questionable character. There shouldn't be any question with respect to, 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 to your character, with respect to, to your education, with respect. Because if there is a question, you can't give what you don't have. If, if you have a questionable character, if you have a questionable certification with respect to what you are presenting, then we will have a lot of questions to ask when you come into public governance. You can't give what you don't have. Yeah, this drama. Yeah, this this drama over his certificate is really going on for so long, and people are saying, "No, just let them bring it out." If there's nothing to hide. Let them bring it out and let's get over this and move on to something else. I mean, Okotiete, who was rejected, um, you know, one of the nominees, ministerial nominees, she's written to her the school where she school to make her results public and understand her results are out there on the internet. So, you know... And then, and then, for me, one of the things I take out of it is, is for a university to say they don't have a copy of, of, this, of the certificate they've issued and the certificate they've issued is ceremonial. It's, there are a lot of questions we need to ask. Well, for some of us in academics, I don't just want to be prejudicial with respect to what will be the outcome of If you understand that there are so many schools not even we are, they are assuming we have had people that have presented fake PhD results from, from, from overseas universities and some, some through screening have, have, been, have, been, have been excused from the system. But let's keep our fingers crossed. Yes, and see how it all ends. And, and, and whatever, if the president is found culpable, then he should answer to, 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 to his culpability. And if he's, if he's justified that he graduated from the school, and I think that will leave this to rest. We we'll let this ghost to rest and it will not rear its ugly head once again. Because this particular issue is throwing Nigeria into the spotlight and is bringing Nigeria to ridicule. If you like it or not, it's dropping on our image. Fear and simple. Mm. Okay, let's move forward. The Daily Independent is the next newspaper and it leads with Tinubu to UN. The world will ignore Nigeria at its own peril. The riders says until Nigerians have arisen out of poverty, he won't rest. Africans will no longer accept oppression from powerful nations. Those were words from the president uh, at the Onga in New York, where he gave some very powerful speeches. Um, what's your take on this? Uh, the world will ignore Nigeria at its own peril. Well, um He's out in generally. He's out in generally. How you've listened to some of the speeches, the one he made and the ones he made on, on the sidelines of this uh, event. Uh, what's your take on it, all of it? Well, I think that in terms of foreign policy, he's more engaging. I think what he has done in his first hundred days is much more uh, proactive and more active than what Barry has done. Barry so low at the bar when we respect to uh, foreign diplomacy and international relations that um, whatever anybody does after on the on the barest minimum becomes becomes excellent and there's no doubt that if these steps are taken with this engagement the president was in india the president was for the g20 summit is also in in united in united states of america uh, so i think that um, for me is this a positive step in the right in the in the right direction with respect to foreign 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 relations and foreign affairs compared to what we have had in the past. And some of the speeches and the encouragement in telling Nigerians to come back home. And I think that it takes, we need Nigerians in the diaspora to come back home to help us build this nation. Foreigners will not help you build your country. It is, it is the citizens of this country that will, that will help to build 
this part that will help to build your country. We see charity begins at home. So if Nigerians in diaspora have confidence in this country and they come back to contribute their own quota, I can assure you that what you have is you have an increase in your gross national product because there will be a lot of there will be a lot of foreign currencies that will be repatriated back home, and then there will be a lot of foreign intelligence. There will be a lot of foreign expertise coming from your citizen that will, that will grow the local that will grow the local economy. We need Nigerians in the diaspora to come and invest, and government needs to put in place. And the number one sales person for the country is the president. The president needs to market the country and not to market the country. A lot of the marketing was done by the by the by the previous administration, and I think this president is striving to ensure that he markets the country properly. What should, that those speeches should be backed up with policy, concrete mm. policies, concrete policies that provide. The opportunities and avenues for Nigerian in the diaspora to come home and to participate in in, in in the economy. Concrete policy in terms of deregulation, allowing people deregulation, taking away government, government rule and, and government policies that can combat people bringing in their resources to invest in this country and the ability of people also to take whatever they have made from Nigeria back to wherever they are. And I think that beyond the rhetoric, must back it up with proactive policies that 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 matches what we want to achieve indeed lovely speeches which should be backed up with actions and if nigerians yeah. abroad are going to be convinced to come back home they need to see more happening i don't know how many of them yeah. are there will be willing to leave wherever they are to come back home and invest no, really. indeed we if want them to come we right. want them to come but i'm just wondering how many of them will be willing to come right yeah. now one of the areas we need to do is to improve the security improve security ensure that it is easier. Nigeria is a beautiful country. Nigerians love, look, a lot of Nigerians that are in my generation, that are my friends, they love coming home in December. Mm. They would rather come to Nigeria to have their holiday. Yeah. Are you getting it now? Mm -hmm. if, 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 if we improve the security situation of, of the country, we improve the security situation, which makes it for people to travel safely, we improve the infrastructure. For example, we improve the infrastructure. It's easier for you to travel through the letter and breadth of this country. Nigeria is a, is a beautiful country that you can go on only just travel, traveling from Lagos to Calabar, Calabar to Makodi, Makodi to to Jos, Jorpa, to Abuja, and then come back. What 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 a fantastic road trip it would be for you to just go through to that. But it's because of the insecurity we have. Yeah. And you know what, what contribution it will make to the local economy. Just imagine you. Or maybe leaving Lagos, traveling through to Calabar, Calabar, uh, Calabar to Makodi, Makodi to Jos, Jos, back to Abuja, Abuja, back to Lagos, back to Lokoja, and the rest of it. You know, we will spend money, we will contribute to the local economy. Definitely. We'll buy whatever so, so the, we, the economy will grow, Naira will be strengthened compared to the dollar, and the exchange rate will be, we, 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 Naira will be able to compete with the dollar because we grow our economy. Indeed, I know, I know, I know that most of our people are there. And then you really know what we'll get from tourism? You know what we will get? We'll get from tourism. Countries mm. um look, countries are trying to the global standard for what you get for your GDP from tourism is ten percent. Is ten I'm not sure we get zero point five percent. Hmm. Indeed, we need to put things in order because I just as you have said, I know many who are wishing they could come back from time to time. But this insecurity thing, this power uh, uh, problem, uh, you know, the bad roads have really made it difficult for them to want to come home. But uh, we'll see, uh, hopefully see a change in all of that with this new administration. Adel Deputy Governor Shoaibu begs Obaseki for forgiveness. You want to comment on the drama? I mean that's been unfolding in I think, state. I think that there is a need, I think that there is a need for us to review the Constitution 1 to provide clear court rule for what the, the, uh, the Vice President and Deputy Governor the, should do. That's one, two. And I think that probably we should adopt the approach of so many states, United States of America, where both the Governor and the Lieutenant Governor are elected. They are elected. They could be on the same party in, platform. Individually. They could be on different party mm. platform. Yeah, they are elected individually. Uh, other than this joint ticket whereby the deputy governor is subjected to the whims and the caprices of the governor. What is happening here is happening in Edo. Undo Edo. You could see the drama that is playing that is playing out in Edo and in Undo. We have seen this drama. This drama have played out over and over time. If, if I ask you, what's the name of the deputy governor 
of River State when Nelson Wiki was the deputy, where was the governor? Nobody knew. Most of the deputy governors are like spear tire. Mm -hmm. They are like spear tire. Uh, they, they, are, they are neglected, they are rejected. And how can a governor, what gives the governor the power to unilaterally move the office of the deputy governor from one place to the, from, 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 from government house to a dilapidated building? Or what gives the governor the power to sack the aides, like we have in Ondo State, to sack all the aides of the deputy governor? These, these are just blatant abuse. The governors are operating as if they are equal. So there has, once the court cases are true, all the court cases at the state level, at the, at the federal level, I think one of the issues we should do as civil society is to put before the National Assembly some areas that we need to codify with respect to how we need to strengthen our democracy. From 1999 to 2000, 2023, how many governors have been impeached and how many governors have been restated by, by, by the courts for, for, for wrongful impeachment perpetuated, orchestrated rather, by the governor and perpetuated by the state of assembly that are an appendage of, 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 of the executive governor of the state. The, the drama is playing out in Edu. The one playing out in Edu is ridiculous, extremely ridiculous. It is. Last week, we saw how he was locked out. The deputy governor locked out of his office and he was standing in front of the... Can you imagine? elected, constantly elected, he was as far as... I felt as embarrassed for him. Listen, Dury became the governor because, I can't recall, um, I'll recall the guy's name, because the, in Bayesa State, because the FPC candidate that won the election, his deputy governor had a questionable matter with respect to a certificate. So it's a joint ticket. It's, a, it's not a personal ticket. Without the deputy governor, the governor cannot be elected. If anything affects the deputy governor, it affects the governor. Mm -hmm. And as I said, I, I don't really care about whatever personal issues they have, but the offices they occupy must be respected. Exactly. The democracy we, yeah, we practice must be respected. Those, those are the core issues. Okay, let's move to the Guardian newspaper. And the, the headline here is Paradox of Plenty. It's a big story. Uh, details of, of this you find it on pages four and five. Paradox of Plenty. Nigeria loses one trillion naira yearly importing active pharmaceutical ingredients. So there you have the picture there of drugs. You want to talk about this? Well, um, I think that um, the golden the is nobody knew about Napdak. Hmm. Or the Dora Kuyu. Dora Kuyu, your blessed memory. Blessed memory. As long as as long the mantle of leadership of Napdak. And after she left that office, uh, just like that, that was since 1992 or 1993 when it was created by, by, by the Babangida administration, that, that has gone into the door drum again. Mm. I think that um, um, Mark, John Maxwell that said that everything rises and falls on leadership. Uh, I, I think that one of the things that the president should do and his team is to look for the right people, the right people. To man critical agencies, to man to, to go on a recruitment drive beyond partisan, beyond partisanship, beyond nepotism, beyond the uh, clannishness. We must look for the right people to man critical agencies so as to forestall the occurrence of this of, 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 of this. Of, you are looking at it in terms of monetary value. What about it in terms of lives that have been lost as a result of this? What about, what about people that have suffered severe consequences from, from their, from their health, health issues as a result of not having access to the right medication because some agencies that are required to do what they are supposed to do are not doing what they are supposed to do. As far as I'm concerned, the president should look for a critical person to head NAPDAC. The president should look for a critical person to head NPA. To, to head NPA. NPA is too important for, for, for the airship to be partisanship. Look for a core professional to man these agencies so that we can have delivery from so these agencies that will be of importance to, to, to the economy and that will be of, 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 of importance to the citizenry in terms of their well-being. 
All right, so let's look at the other headlines here. Dangote modular refineries abandon petrol refining over return of subsidy. Hmm. Dangote modular refineries abandon petrol refining over return of subsidy. I think we should touch on this well, before uh, we go to the other ones. Well, um, what we are told is that um, we do, well, it's nothing new. It's only those that are just coming to town with it. That for government to commission on completed project mm. and um, and, and you put it as part of their achievement. We have seen our governors and the president across the land and breadth of this country celebrating hundred days, and then some even bought pages of newspaper to list the litany of achievement they've achieved in, in, in 100 days. Why do you commission a project that has not been completed? Why? For example, if you raise the hope of Nigerians that, well, if this refinery is coming on board, well, something positive will happen with respect to um, local, local production of petroleum, petroleum products. But you said, okay, the refinery will not be ready, and you are removing subsidy. If I'm a private businessman and government is introducing subsidy and I'm establishing my business in order to make profit and in order even to break even and at the end of the make profit I'll go for the best option that will make me to break even at least if I can't make profit if government is subsidizing petroleum products and then I want to look at production why should I go about it so you see you see, you see policy somersault we always have completed the you see we take 10 steps forward we take 20 step backward it's the same thing the president make those that pronouncement, the move our force of city, uh, we invite exchange with a lot of people are applauding. We are asked the question should have been asked. How are we going to how are we going to achieve? How are we going to sustain this policy? What are the implications of this policy on the overall economy, on the exchange rate, on an average citizen in the country? As a result of that, at the end of the, the government introduced properly into brought in place palliative. The palliative made the commissioner in Udu State to have to have bumps on her on her head. The palliatives made some people to, to hijack some lorries and take the palliative on themselves. At the same time, in less than two months after the government introduced the palliative, and in less than four months after they removed the first subsidy, the government is going back to return to bringing him back the first subsidy. It's just that's the one that has come to the public domain. How many policies have they reversed? How many policy reversals have they made? In the last 100 days. Yeah, sadly, sadly, in. Nigeria that should be smiling to the banks because the price of crude oil uh, is, is is going high, is is lamenting, is crying, is even suffering. If, look, look, even if you, if you, for example, I came here to do an accreditation of school. I'm, I'm, I'm to be, the, the, what I'm entitled to is 20 naira per kilometer. Are you getting my point? 20 naira, mm. that's the federal government approved. 20 naira per kilometer. For, for, for my travels. Now, 20 naira per kilometer, 20 naira, 100 kilometer is Ibadan. Can you enter any, can you enter any public transport to go to Ibadan from Lagos with 2,000 naira? <laughs> okay, let me quickly just read out the other headlines so that we wrap it up because of time. You have, despite Tinubu's assurance, U.S. issues travel advisory to citizens. Ogun lawmaker, six others nabbed over Shagamu court clash and, um, Tinubu files motion to stop Chicago uh, varsity from releasing academic records. Uh, that's the much you can take from the Guardian. And then the Nation newspaper, you have, at least with Tinubu, who's Nigerians in U.S. to invest back home. Similar thing in Shoaibu's office at the government house relocated. 22 lawmakers, okay, move to impeach Ondo deputy governor. Well, uh, Mr. Johnson, sadly we can't continue with the conversation, but it's been really interesting discussing with you, as always, uh, on Out the Press. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you. Have a wonderful weekend. You too. Sajida Johnson, senior lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism, uh, Lagos State, has joined us, but this morning he joined in from Kwara State. Stay with us. We'll be coming back in a moment with our first hot topic want to discuss this new surprise that we are experiencing in Nigeria is fuel subsidy back. And if it is back, why are we still buying fuel at the cost that we are buying it? Stay with us.